Hi and welcome to Poly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's workshop we're going to make some polymer clay fairy wings. Now these ones have been such fun to make. I use liquid polymer clay plus insetting some canes but there's also some wire work so you can actually bend these and shape them and position them however you want when you're finished. The initial concept I came up with was for these ones and I'm using an extruder to create the outline skeleton of the wings um, but of course not everyone has an extruder and it can be a little bit fiddly so then I had an idea for doing them this way which is the second way I'm going to show you to do them and the other thing with this way is you can actually use what we call a Skinner blend to create this lovely graduation of one colour through to another. So I'll show you the two basic techniques. Um, I'm also going to mention the equipment I use and the polymer clay I use. So if you want to go straight to the techniques, this one, which is the um, example number one, I'll put a detail on the screen as to when that one is. So you can just jump straight to that one. And I'll also add the details on the screen as to where this one is, so you can jump straight to this one if you would rather. And of course you can always have a look and see how it's done. And if it is something you fancy having a go at, come back and look at the full list of equipment and the sort of clay that you need. In this example I've added little diamantes and I add them both on one side and on the other and so I'll show you the technique for doing that. Of course you don't have to add diamantes if you don't have any little crystals. You can add beads or if you want to do something like a steampunk one just add little sort of clock parts, anything like that that you can add in to the clay. This one I haven't added any of those but you can just use these techniques on this one if you want. The other thing to bear in mind is the amount of flexibility you want in your finished wings. These ones have much more flexibility in than this one. So have a think about that. I'm assuming it's something to do with the fact that it's extruded clay and it's the proportion of the clay and the amount of liquid clay. And these ones definitely, if you make your skeleton outlines on the fairy wings too thick, you definitely have problems with bending the clay. It also depends how much wire you put in. In this one, there's much less wire than there is in this one, and also the position of the wire. So have a think about what you want to do and how you want your wings to bend or not in the finished product, and then choose how you want to make them. It's quite a fun technique once you've figured out how to do it, and of course you can make some really pretty um, fairy wings. So let's move on to the equipment and I'll talk you through the few extra things you need to know about the equipment and the clay. But as I mentioned, if you want to, of course, just speed straight on to where we start the process of making the wings themselves. I'll run you through the equipment first. There's not too much, but just a few things um, which are handy. Um, the polymer clay blade, I often refer to these as tissue blades. Now obviously I haven't done this um, tutorial as something for children, but if it is something that you are getting involved in with children, obviously please be very careful of anything like this which is sharp and always supervise children at all times. Craft knife. I use something like this cable needle. It's not particularly necessary to have one exactly like this. I simply use this to press things down into the clay at certain parts. A roller, either an ordinary one or a Brea roller, is handy when we're doing example number two. With example one, where we use the extruded clay, we're going to need to see where we're going to lay the little pieces of clay on. So I'm working on something that's see-through, and obviously it then needs to go in the oven. So this is a piece of glass. I've got a piece that's big enough to take the two templates that I'm using for the fairy wings. And this is actually from a, a picture frame. And all I've done, because it's from a picture frame or a photo frame, the sides of the glass are often very sharp. So I've just taped them up just to make sure I don't cut myself whilst I'm working. And so I've got a bit of masking tape for that and just masking tape to tape the pieces on the underside. The main part of the wings is done with the translucent clay, the liquid polymer clay. I'm using the Fimo, but all of the well-known brands of liquid polymer clay work very well. So the translucent liquid Sculpey both work very, very well. Um, this just happened to be the bottle I picked up for what I was doing today. And although I'm using the Fimo liquid, I am using the Primo Sculpey for the clay, which I'll go on to in a moment or two. So you can mix any of the brands in between each other as long as they bake at the same temperature. Any overspills of the liquid clay when it's baked can be cut, so we just need a pair of scissors to cut off any excess clay. When we're extruding the clay, we get very long, thin pieces, so I just use simply a laminated sheet um, to put those on. Those of you who've seen my videos before know I always use this one. It's freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net, and I simply laminate them to work on. We're not going to measure anything. You don't need anything measured today, but it's simply just to put the extruded clay on. And on that, 
the extruder I use these days is the Lucy Clay Extruder because it's just amazing and once you've had these you realise how good it is however they are of course rather expensive so unless you're planning on doing a lot of polymer clay work any extruder that's um, used with polymer clay will work well we're only going to extrude a very small amount of one colour so you don't need very much and of course if you don't have an extruder you can always just roll the clay by hand and with your fingers just roll it out until you get a nice even size but of course it takes much longer to do that by hand and it's not as even as if you do it with an extruder but if you don't have an extruder that is an option for you for the extruder disc or die we're using i'm using the lucy clay one again which comes in the the set it's sort of like aqua green set um, because it's the one with very small dots if you're using one something like the makins extruder they also have um, a small dot one although there's a slightly bigger um, this is just about just over a millimetre so anything between one or two millimetres will work absolutely fine for what we're planning on doing today when I work with the liquid clay I use a couple of paint brushes these are used exclusively for liquid clay and when I'm not using them I just simply leave them in the jam jar because they have a tendency to get messy when I'm adding the little crystals these are the ones I'm using for today's session um, they're about one millimetre big and they're the ones with the little pointed ends don't know if you can see that bring it right up to the camera see if I can focus in so they've got the points at the back and you can actually look for them online under point backed crystals now obviously you don't have to have the point backed ones you can have the flat backed ones um, you can also have the stick on ones which you can add on afterwards but because these are pointy I'm going to add them as we're going along they work very nicely with the fairy wings and just add a little bit of sparkle you can add as few or as many as you like and because we're picking them up and they're very small I just use one of these sticks to pick up sticks um, they're very handy just for picking up the tiny little crystals and adding them where we want them to go if you don't want to use crystals then of course you could use tiny bees if you want to do a steampunk one use some little clock parts whatever you want to do to make to add in to make your wings special for the particular fairy you're planning on doing to give the added bend to our piece when it's baked I use wire and we inset this into the fairy wing. Now you can use any sort of wire as long as it's the sort that's going to be bakeable. I like to use the aluminium wire for two reasons. One because it's very easy to bend but it's strong enough to give our piece shape when we've finished but flexible enough that you can change the shape of it very easily and you can fit it into the small amounts of clay we're using. It also comes in nice bright colours so you can either hide it away or you can have it exposed but either way it looks good and this is the one millimetre piece and again you can buy packs of these very easily online and you usually get a nice selection of bright colours to use when you're using them and because we're using wire I've just got a pair of wire cutters just the small jewellery type you only need small pieces probably don't need much more than about oh, 10 inches um, 25 centimetres in total so not a huge amount and as I say just use whatever you have to hand on the second example, we'll sometimes get a bit of residue clay stuck to the tile we work on, so I'll use something like a Q-tip just to take up any excess and clean the um, tile as we work. As I just mentioned, I will be working on a small tile for the second example because we actually create everything on the tile, but it doesn't need to be see-through this time. And we'll be working on our cutouts separately so they won't be attached. And we're going to be indenting them, so I'm going to be using a small ball tool. So anything from about two to four millimetres would be a good size of ball tool to use. I will, of course, make these available for you on my website and I'll put a link in the details below so that you can use these, but obviously create your own designs and draw your own designs if you would rather. Um, but I know for some of you it's easier to have those there. So apart from the templates and the small tile, I also use a big tile to work on. I have biodegradable wet wipes and tissues to hand to clean both my hands and my equipment as I go along. Particularly useful to have something um, wet. So if you don't want to use wet wipes, just a wet cloth will do just to wipe your hands, particularly when you're using the liquid clay. And of course, I do use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. If you don't have a pasta machine, then you can always just stack up layers of playing cards on either side and roll over the top to get your clay to a nice even sheet. OK, I think that is about it for the equipment we need, so I'll move on to the clay for today's session. For today's session, I've got the clay we need for one, example one and the clay for example number two. The amounts of clay I've put down here are much more than you need to create one set of fairy wings. However, you need a certain amount in order to be able to create the look we're going for. And what you'll have left over means you can create more than one set if you want to. 
all well-known and recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. But obviously the more pliable the clay, once it's finished baking, the better it will actually be. So I'm going to be using Primo, Sculpey Primo today, um, because it's got a really nice amount of flexibility when it's baked. The most flexible polymer clay is Cos Clay, and I have done this using Cos Clay, and it works very, very well. But there's just two things with it, why I didn't use it for today's session. One, not many people have access to it. And two, when you extrude it, it is very, very sticky. Almost so sticky, it becomes difficult to work with. So unless you're used to working with Cos Clay, I'd suggest probably sticking with the um, Primo Sculpey. So as to the amounts we're going to use, for the extruded clay I'm simply using a quarter ounce or seven grams and this is wisteria. Then we're going to do a bit of cane work so we're going to create a pretty very simple little cane that sits inside the wings. So for this I've gone for white, violet and I don't actually have any of the purple left at the moment in Primo but if you mix equal amounts of the ultramarine blue and the violet you get a nice purple colour. So I'm planning, that's what I'm planning. So they all make up one colour two colours, three colours. So all of these are going to end up being the same quarter an ounce or seven grams. So obviously these are actually an eighth of an ounce or three and a half grams of each of those colours. And that is example number one. That's all the clay you need apart from the liquid polymer clay. For the example number two, we're going to create a nice Skinner blend in the background. And again, this is much, much more, as I said, than you need just to create the outlines. But you need quite a large sheet of clay in order to create the outline of the wing. But you will have loads left over, so you don't need all of this for creating the fairy wings. So all of these, when they're put together, work out to be half an ounce or 14 grams of the colours. However, I'm mixing again because I want this dark purple and I haven't got it. I'm mixing a quarter of an ounce or seven grams of the violet and the ultramarine blue and a quarter of an ounce of the wasabi and the green just to give me a gentler, softer green rather than bright green of this one. And then half an ounce of the turquoise and half an ounce and 14 grams of the blue. I will be doing a slightly different um, insert for this one, but made up of the same proportions, and I'll go through the colours of that when we get to that part of the tutorial. First thing to do is to condition all the clay thoroughly. I condition it using my pasta machine, and I'll end up with sheets of all of these in these sizes and these amounts, and I end up with sheets going through setting number three of my pasta machine. And on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. So you're looking for a medium sort of setting. And for this one, I'm simply going to condition it and roll it into a, a log so that it fits inside the extruder. If you're unsure what I mean by conditioning clay, I have got a tutorial with a few tips and techniques about that, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. Before we start building up the fairy wings, we need to think about where we're going to put the wire placements in to give us that nice bendable effect at the end. As I mentioned, I'm using the aluminium wire, the one millimetre one, and I'm going to go for the purple because we're going for the purpley coloured wings in this one today. And all I've done is I've just pulled it straight with my fingers to get myself a nice straight piece. And I'm going to put the first piece right along this outside edge because that gives us a nice amount of bend. Second piece I'm going to put along the middle of the two and the third piece I'm actually going to put along this sort of inner curve bit here um, so that gives us a bit of um, flexibility on the bottom of the wing. You can put them wherever you want. In this particular example I'm going to hide them within the outline of the wing. In the second example I show you I give you a different place to put them. So if you find it difficult doing this then have a look at the second example because there are other places you can put the wires which are slightly easier to place but doing it this way hides the wires which gives quite a nice effect. So what I'm going to do is with this piece nice and straight and flat I'm going to curve it not quite at the top but put it into place and curve it round. Where it hits the midpoint I'm going to pull it straight up and pull up, I don't know, probably a couple of inches, five centimetres, something like that. And that's our first piece done. Put that to one side. The reason I do the pull up is twofold. One, 
because there's not enough room to have it sort of coming flat out because obviously our two wings are too close together. But also when we bake this, having these pieces upright means that any aluminium foil we put over will automatically be kept well away from all the liquid clay we've got on our piece of glass. So that's our first piece. As I said, the second piece comes from about there. In. I'm going to take it slightly in from the join because if you've got your diamantes you're putting in you'll have a diamante there so you don't want it to um, go into there again when it gets to the middle pull straight up and the third piece is going to go from there then it's going to curve a bit so just put your thing, finger or thumb on it curve it round and curve it around again and that's why I like the aluminium wire because it's so easy to bend and so pliable but gives enough strength when it's baked to actually be able to bend the form so again that's the third piece and you also want to make sure that these do sit nice and flat on the um, the tile or the glass so get the wire done for both sides and then we'll start creating the structure for the wings for method one, we are going to use an extruder and we're going to lay extruded um, logs or coils of clay round the outside of the template. So because of that, I've cut out my two templates. I've put them onto the back of the piece of glass and put it in such a way that I can easily see what I am doing. If you just wanted to put the clay on and the additional bits of colour in all the pieces that are shown and not have any diamantes, then you don't need to do this first bit. However, if you want to add in the little diamantes that go on the back of the wings, so you've got them at the back and at the front, then the way to do that is to add a layer of liquid clay onto the outlines of our pieces first. Put the little diamantes in upside down in all the places you want to put them and then bake the piece. That does two things. It obviously puts them all in place and allows you to see and have the little diamantes showing on both sides. And also with the points of the diamantes pointing upwards, it gives you a little bit of extra things to catch onto when we lay the tiny little thin um, extruded pieces of clay. So you don't need to be overly neat with this because the great thing about liquid clay is you can cut it after it has baked. I have a couple of paint brushes that I use exclusively for liquid clay. So because I'm doing quite a large area, I'm going to use the large one. And I've chopped a little bit extra off the nozzle than when it arrives so I can push out um, more liquid clay at once. So I took a bit of time, make sure it was over all the areas. You can turn it on its side to make sure you haven't missed any. Then using the stick stew pencil, I'm going to pick up the diamantes that are upside down and just lay them on all the points where I'm going to put a little diamante. I'm also going to put them on the bottom of all the added pieces we're going to put in, but I'm going to put them slightly higher up than right at the point because when we do the top side, I'll move them slightly down. You don't want to have two points coming together at the same place if possible. And whereas they're on the joints here, we're going to overlay a couple of bits of the extruded clay. When they're just on these thin slices, just put them slightly different to where you would and just continue doing that, putting them in all the places you want. And once you've done one side, do exactly the same with the other. Once I've done both sides and put all the little diamantes every place I want them, put them on a larger tile and I will cover the whole of that tile in um, aluminium foil but tented so that it's not touching the liquid clay and I will bake it according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of liquid clay I am using. And whilst that's baking we can start extruding the clay. I've suggested this amount of clay which gives you much much more than you need for one set of fairy wings but it means that when you roll it up and put it through the extruder it comes to about that sort of size which means that when it extrudes it gives you nice long lengths. Um, as I mentioned earlier some of the clays are stickier than others but this Primo is pretty good and it gives you nice flexibility afterwards however it is quite sticky when it comes straight out which is why I'm recommending you do this whilst your piece bakes um, because once it comes out carefully separate out all the little individual extruded strings um, and leave them unattached on a sheet, something like this, um, so they're easily 
available for use. So if you've done the diamantes, you've got to wait until the piece has baked and cooled. If you haven't, then obviously you can start straight away. And the process of adding the extruded pieces is fairly simple. Just start at the corner where it goes over diamante. You can press down, as I say, that just helps it stick in slightly. And you very simply just follow the lines of the wings all the way around. And it will either stick to the glass if you haven't got the liquid clay underneath or if you have got the liquid clay, then it should stick nicely to that. Where you get to a bit where it's connecting, you just overlap and take off the excess. Because of course, wherever the overlap is, that's where we're going to put a diamante on the other side, if that's what you wanted to do. And just continue doing that, working your way slowly around. Always overlapping the joins. Once you finish the outline, the next thing to do is to put in the wire pieces. So you've got the wire that you had earlier. So very gently, just lay it on top. And because it's aluminium, it bends very easily. Lay it on top of where you want your wire to be and very gently, just press it slightly into the clay if you can. You want to make sure it's not sticking up at any point. Do that with all three pieces. And I normally do one side at a time because there's a tendency to um, knock the piece you've just done if you do both sides. And then you could either leave them as they are because that's quite a good colour match actually to what we're working on. But if you did want to cover them over, Take an extra piece of your extruded clay and just set it on top and around the wire. And then you can take a bit of time pressing it in with your finger or using the cable needle just to press that in to completely hide the wire whilst keeping the shape of the wing. And once you've done one side and all three pieces repeat and do exactly the same on the other side. So there we are with both pieces done and the wires all covered up. Now that really is the trickiest part of the whole process. So if you've managed to do that, absolutely amazing. If you haven't and if you're finding it annoying, just don't do it. You can say in the second example I show you where you can put the wires in completely different places where you don't have to hide them away. And of course, as you saw, if you've got the coloured wire and it matches nicely anyway, just leave it uncovered. It's completely up to you what you do and how difficult or not you make it and what effect you want to have in your finished piece. If you try doing this and it makes a complete mess, just cut the whole thing away because you've got enough extruded clay and just replace it and then go on and put the wires in another way. But seeing as I'd done that in the examples I showed on social media, I felt I had to put it in as part of the um, process to show you how you could do it if that's what you wanted to do. So we are now ready for doing the tiny little bits that we're going to add in to create the rest of the pattern. We're going to create a very simple internal decoration doing a Skinner blend between these three colours. So this is the white, the violet and then the mixture between the violet and the ultramarine which brings up that nice purple colour. So I've put them all through on setting number three of my pasta machine and then they're all conditioned nicely. I'm going to cut through not quite to the corners but diagonally through the two end points and straight down the middle for that one and then turn the two triangles on their sides Put that roughly across the middle that way, turn those up and put them back so the diagonals are going there. If you're unused to Skinner Blends, I do have a tutorial with a few tips and techniques on it and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Because I've got, I'm going to fold them in half now, which gives us four layers of clay. So I'm now going to put that back through the pasta machine, fold first, and each time it comes through, pick it up and put it back fold first till I end up with a nice blend between all those colours. And because I've now got four layers of clay there, I will put it up onto one thicker setting on my pasta machine, so setting number two on my pasta machine, and I'll bring you back when I've got that nice blend done.
When the blend's done, I'm going to cut that into halves, lay one half on top of the other and put it back through the pasta machine, dark end first on that same setting number two. That gives us a longer strip. Then I'm going to put it down to my thinnest usable setting, which on my machine is setting number nine, to give myself the longest, thinnest strip I can. If you know your machine shreds or tears your clay, then simply go down one setting at a time until you can get down to your thinnest usable setting. Once your clay is done, then we're going to roll it up from the light end first. And as I'm rolling, I'm making sure I have no air trapped in the clay. And cut down into evenish quarters. Don't worry too much if they're not even, but if you can get them even, that's fine. And then we're just going to pull up the darker sides slightly and then push the whole of the bottoms inwards and elongate the white to the top to give that sort of shape. And do that with all four pieces. Then two at a time, put them together, pressing in just at the bottom. And put all four pieces together. And then once you've pushed them all together, just pull over the tops to make a triangular shape. Cut through the middle. put both halves together. So that's our pattern and what we want to do now is to reduce that down so we get it to the sizes and the shape where it can fit in the bits of, of our wing. So the easiest way to reduce a shape like that is to make it into a square to start with. So I'm just pushing it down to a square because once we've got it into a square we can reduce it down. So you can see I was just pushing in with my fingers and once you've got it roughly to a square you can turn it on one side and I'm just pushing in and whilst you're pushing it, it tends to go longer which is what we call reducing in polymer clay. So when you've got it to a shape that's probably sort of, is much less than the length of our first big piece you can then press in on the sides which again makes it longer. Give it a roll on the bottom because we're changing the shape into more of a, a teardrop shape and then you can press out and pull out the top. Don't bother doing the whole length because we're only doing this top bit. We only want a couple of slices just to go in these top bits and then we're going to make it smaller and smaller as we go down. You can put it in to see whether it's the right sort of shape. It's a bit wide at the moment so I'm going to press it narrower and longer. And of course you don't have to go exactly the shapes I've done here. You can make up your own shapes as you go along. And we only want two slices, so I'm only really sort of defining this end of the cane. So I'll take off the uneven end bit just to see how we're doing size-wise. And I think that looks quite good. So all I'm going to do now is just cut two slices. Now you want them, if possible, to be pretty thin. Um, this is a good time to practice your cane slicing. There is a natural tendency where you press down for it to go straight, but that's fine because we've got a little bit of a straighter area on that side. So just press him in and sit him down and then turn this one up the other way. So you do your other side. And if you notice, I've put them so that little diamante is much further up so that when I put the diamantes on this side, I can put them down there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on doing that process of reducing this down, getting it to the right size, and then doing so those two are roughly the same. So you want four slices of those. And then this one's the next one. And then these two are roughly the same. That just leaves us a squat one to do and then we can get it really down to the small size to do the inner bits. So I will speed up that process because you've seen how it's done but show you as I'm doing it until we get all those um, larger pieces done and we'll stop when we get to this shape size.
create this shape as you see I've just taken off a little length of the piece I was working on and when I was reducing this piece all I was doing was that motion all the time pressing it smaller and then sort of pressing in down the side to make it narrow but to do this shape we actually want a nice flat so I'm going to use the flat of my hand to create that now it's a little bit smaller at the moment so I'm just going to press that down to make it shorter because it goes shorter so it goes wider and I'm just pinching there while sort of rolling around with my finger and then that should give us roughly the sort of shape we're looking for again we only want two slices now they will have got flattened when I've pressed down but just very gently pull them out wider with your finger and that gives us the shape to go into that piece and of course you can do that shape all the way around you can put whatever shape you want in. These are just examples I've done here, just giving you ideas how to decorate. Okay, so we've now got the very small pieces. So I've got quite a large piece left here. We don't need very much. And taking this one piece, I'm just going to make this really nice and small so it's small enough to do all these little individual pieces. Okay, so I've got it down to the size that I want and all I'm now going to do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 slices of the cane and then the same on this side. And what I will normally do is I will work on one side and then the other side so that if you change um, the shape or the, the way this pattern goes as you're working down, these will mirror each other as you work down. And I simply start from the top one and then add the others in. And depending on how it looks, if I want to, I will sometimes add an extra one right at the middle um, just to take you down to that inner point, just to give it a bit more stability as it goes in. But again, that's completely up to you. So we'll see how we go and how it looks, and I'll decide as we go along. Okay, so as you can see, I've actually gone for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces there. And I might do the same, so rather than have five, I might go for six with an extra one in the middle down there. But as I say, I will gradually work my way down, taking the slices, adding them in. I'll fast forward a bit and then I'll bring you back when the whole process is finished. Okay, there we are with all the pieces in. I also took a bit of time because I'd particularly this top bit had come slightly out of shape. I'm um, going around making sure that all the pieces are nicely in place. If you've messed a piece up with your hands where you're adding the bits in, simply cut it away and add an extra bit from your extruded pieces. So only two bits left to do. One, put the layer of liquid clay on and if we're doing diamantes then add the additional diamantes and I add those after the liquid clay um, because if you put them on now and have quite a thick layer of liquid clay then it takes away the sparkle so we put the liquid clay first and then add the diamantes right at the very end. So adding the liquid clay it's simply a case of filling in the gaps and as with most things start with less because it's always easier to add more than it is to um, add too much and then to have to try and take it away. I'm just going to work my way all the way around. I'm not going to put it over the top of these pieces at the moment because I use a brush to just gently brush over the top of those with the excess as we go and I will normally work on one side only, get this side finished with the liquid clay and then move on to the next. So I then just use a small brush just to push the clay to make sure it's touching and up to the outer edges of all our infrastructure in every part of the wing. If 
I need to add more, then I will just add an extra dollop. And then once I'm happy that the whole of the piece is encased, then I will just gently drag a thin layer with the brush over the top of the patterned clay. So I'll do that for each section, so say making sure that it's carefully going in, so if I go to place here where there isn't any, I might need to add an extra drop. Once I've done the whole piece, then I will also go over the outside edges very gently with the paintbrush, and then when you've finished, if you hold it up to the light, you can generally see whether there's areas that you have missed. Okay, so a little adjustment there, I had a bit too much, so as you saw I put some of the excess over into this side and if I have too much when I do that side then I'll simply put it back into the bottle. And when I lifted it up to check in the light I saw a little area here I'd missed and an area here I'd missed. So it is worthwhile doing that and checking. So having done one side, I will now do exactly the same for the second side and bring you back when I've got that done. Once both sides are done, the only thing left to do if you put diamantes on the back is to put them on the front. And so this time you can put them the right way up and just put them and press them into place slightly with the sticks. Each time I put them in place I will then rub that to make sure I haven't got any liquid clay on and just work your way around filling them in in exactly the same places as you did on the back. Where you've crossed over you've got sufficient clay that you should be able to press them in there and of course that helps press those joins in together as well. So there we are, all the little diamantes are in place, all the liquid clay is done, and all I'm going to do now is to put it on the larger tile. As I said before, tent the whole thing in aluminium foil, and because we've got these bits sticking up, it'll hold them nicely in place and hold the aluminium foil off the liquid clay, and also protect it slightly should the oven spike during baking, and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. Once your wings have finished baking, it's time to release them from the glass top. Now this takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and the use of a wet wipe or a wet cloth instead. Because what's handy to do is to carefully, keeping your fingers obviously well away from the blade, just moisten the blade slightly, and just start to slip it under. Go back, moisten, and just gently wiggle backwards and forwards. And you'll see that automatically it starts to curl as it comes off because we've got that wire in there. And just work your way down, making sure you keep your blade well away from your hands. Slowly, slowly, there's no rush. I do find it stays a little bit sticky when it first releases from the um, glass, so just put it on one side and once it's completely cooled, then we'll go around and we'll just cut off very carefully with the scissors, just snipping off all the excess bits of liquid clay that are sticking around the outside. So having released them and say chopped off all the excess, then all I will do generally is because I'm not particularly using these for fairy wings, I'm just doing them as an example, is I'll just twist all those wires just to make it easier. But of course, if you were using for fairies, you could leave them separate or have them all together to put them in so you've got something to stick in um, the back of your piece. So there are your fairy wings, which are not only see-through with some lovely patterning, but they can be bent and they'll keep their shape so you can create whatever look you want in your fairy wings. For our second example, rather than working on glass, we're going to work on a tile and we are going to use two of the cutout templates and this time we're going to impress the outline from the cutouts onto the clay and that's why this time we can use a Skinner blend to create a lovely blend of shades of colours on the outside and the structure of the fairy wings. So we're going to start by doing a Skinner blend and we're going to do a blend from the green to the turquoise to the cobalt blue and then we've got the mix there of the ultramarine and the violet. And as before, we're going to go diagonally 
across the outside ones, straight down the middle ones, and just do a nice blend straight across all these colours. So I'm going to do this exactly the same way as we did for the inside pattern for our previous example of the fairy wings and I'll bring you back when we've got the nice blend from one side to another and when I'm working with the blend in the pasta machine I'm just being aware of the size of this that I want it to be able to take whichever way around we put it the colours and the blend of the fairy wing. So there's our blend and I actually put it through to my thickest setting on my pasta machine because it was getting, I wanted it to get thinner um, so it's easier to work on the um, thicker setting whilst doing that so I didn't get too long a piece. But having now got it to the right width that I want so that when I sit my pieces across I'm going to do them diagonally so they've got a little bit of the green going across into some of the darker purple. I'm going to put it through on a thinner setting that equates to about the same thickness as the extruded clay we were using earlier. So I'm going to put it down to setting number five on my pasta machine, but use whatever gives you probably sort of about a millimeter in thickness. From this point on, we're going to work on the tile because we want this nicely adhered um, to the base. I'm just going to cut it in half and put both sides down. And then with the brayer roller, I'm just going to give it a roll to make sure there's no air trapped underneath and that I've got a nice firm contact between the clay and the tile underneath. And then very simply with the little ball tool I'm going to put the wing on where I want it to be. So say going down a little bit into the green but mainly up so I've got some of that dark purple. And then with the larger end of the ball tool I'm very simply just going to roll over the black lines, only the outer lines, so I'm not bothering with these inner bits. But do it all the way around until every line is done. When you're done, lift up and then you can see there the line inscribed and you can then do the other side in the same area make sure you've got a matching amount of color going through I will generally mask one side whilst I'm working on the other with a piece of card so that I'm not if I suddenly touch it or press down I'm not going to ruin the impression I made and it's very simply a case of cutting out but not cutting out where the inscribed lines are so you just want to run your craft knife inside the inscribed line And then just hook the knife in and pull out the piece and work all your way around. If you find you, you cut wrong, then before you actually pull the piece out, just let me do it here. If you've cut a piece wrong, just with your cable needle, just very gently smooth it back and go back and recut the line. Okay, so it's not a problem. But say just work your way slowly all the way around through one. And you'll see I do all the inside first and then do the outside. And once I've done one, we'll then move on and do the second. And that is all there is to it for this one. is our first wing outline done. I'm going to make sure I've cleaned off all the little bits of clay that are stuck on the inside of the wings because we don't that, want that on the liquid clay and then we'll move on to the next piece. And now it's a case of putting the wire in. Now as I mentioned with the first example on this one I'm going to put it somewhere completely different. So you don't have to have it hidden and of course it's slightly harder to have it hidden in a skinny blend although you could always just have the wire in plain sight if you want to turn them together a nice bright green wire this time but what I'm planning to do on this one 
is the whole design is going to be slightly different and I've got to have the small bits in here. I'm going to have some larger pieces. I'm going to have a large piece here, a large piece here and a large piece here and it's in the large pieces which is where I'm going to put the wire and the wire is going to go from the top but actually right into where the middle of the pieces would be. So there's no hiding it inside anything apart from the slices of cane at the top here. So all we're going to do is exactly the same as we did before, but this time we use the paper template as we go, bring it down, curl it round to the start point or the middle point, and then exactly the same, pull straight up. So our first piece, let's say, is going over to here, second piece is going to come just in the middle so it's going to give us that same ability to bend but it's actually going to come from the middle of that piece round to there and then the last piece is going to go into this bottom bit so it'll give us a chance to have some bend or curve in the bottom so again just a small piece this one and then straight up. So those are our three pieces and then just repeat for the other side of the wing. So I have my wires ready, I have my wing outsides ready and then for the pattern on this one I've gone for exactly the same cane as we did beforehand but this one I did with the the purpley colour so that was a mixture of the ultramarine and the violet and then I've gone down to the ultramarine, cobalt blue, turquoise and the white. And I've already got this one down to the right shape and size for what I want for our first pieces, which we're going to put in here. But because we're going to put a layer of the cane, then the wire on top, and then another layer of the cane on top to hide the end of the wire, obviously you need to cut as thin a piece as you possibly can for this one. So I'm going to take four very thin slices. So those are my four slices, and I've just put them that way up so that I know which way I'm going to orientate them when I lay one on top of the other. And just... Put them in position. If you've got one that's slightly thicker than the other, I'd put the thickest one on the underneath. Try and marry them up as well as you can, but obviously they'll be slightly different because, for instance, I've cut this piece much thicker than I have that piece. Don't worry too much about that, it won't really show in the end piece. And then I'm just going to fit the wire so it sits in, and where it touches the clay, I'm going to just gently press it in. with the cable needle so that it sits properly in and then this piece can just sit on top. And then I will gently just roll over with my cable needle to make sure it's the same height as the surrounding clay because we don't want it sitting too proud. And then repeat with the other side. I think this piece will actually fit in there as well so I'm just going to take, I had an extra slice which didn't cut properly so I'm just going to have a look see. That's, that's pretty good, so I'm going to cut another four slices to put into this block here, the same size of my cane. And same as before, sit a piece in, and this time I'm just with my finger going to push it up until it completely fills that section of the fairy wing. Now you can take your second piece of wire and fit that into the section. Just rechange the shape if you need to move it slightly. Same thing, press it down in and put the other piece on top. And roll flat. Now the final piece, this cane needs to be reduced slightly, so I'll reduce it down and then I'll do exactly the same for the final piece in there. And then we're just going to do, as we did with the, um, example number one, get decreasing sizes and fill in the rest of the pieces.
Okay, there are all the pieces put in. So now all we've got to do is exactly the same as beforehand. Add in the liquid clay and as before, slowly, slowly fill up each section and then with a small brush go over and then make sure there's a layer over the top and make sure there's no gaps. Do one side, then repeat with the other until it's all nicely done. And as before, sort of hold up, sort of look at all sides to make sure you haven't missed any gaps. Right, both sides are done. I have made sure that I've really covered over with liquid clay the exposed wires there so they're well embedded. And apart from that, we are now exactly the same, ready to go and ready to bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And as before, I will completely tent it and these extra bits sticking up will make sure that the aluminium foil doesn't get anywhere near the liquid clay whilst it bakes. And I'll bring you back when this one is done. And there's the second set, again, out of the oven, and again, because you've got the wire in, nice and bendable and pliable. And I think it just adds a little something having that nice graduation on the outside of the fairy wings. There's a set also done in the Primo. And these were done with the turquoise outside. And then the inset here is actually done using the petal inset cane, which is a tutorial I've done previously. And I'll put a link to that in the details below this video. I also think these are really pretty with the peacock petal cane tutorial that I did some while ago and again I'll put a link to that in the description below. And then going for the Skinner Blend ones, these ones have gone from Wisteria through to the Violet through to the Ultramarine for a Skinner Blend um, to give you that look. And then this one I've gone for, I think it was the um, Lemony Yellow, then the Swat Wasabi, Green, Turquoise and Cobalt to give you the internal petal for that one. So there we go, two different ways of doing the fairy wings, either with extruded clay or with using a Skinner blend and cutting out the skeleton of the fairy wings. There's so much you can do with these. As I mentioned before, instead of putting the, um, the Diamante bits on, you can add beads or all sorts of bits and pieces in there. You can swap around the different places of putting the wires. You can put wires in, in every place if you want them. You could have really um, bendable wings. You could also try adding a bit of colour into some of the, um, the liquid clay, some glitter into it, just to add a little bit of extra interest. And if you find that any of your outside of the wings are untidy, you can always get a, a marker pen, a silver or gold marker pen, and go around the edges with those. There's just so much you can do just to create wings of your own and personalise them and have fun and experiment. But hopefully that's given you a few ideas and a few ways of doing some bendable, flexible polymer clay fairy wings. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Okay, I'm off to do a bit more experimenting myself. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>